In this video and the next few videos, we're going to talk about white blood cell disorders. Recall your white blood cells are your immune cells and they come from both your myeloid lineage and your lymphoid lineage. And you can have too much or you can have too little. And when we have too little, we call that leukopenia or low white blood cells. And common causes of this, you can have chemo, radiation, those target cells have a fast turnover rate like uh, cancer cells but also unfortunately like your white blood cells so chemo radiation you can also have decreased white blood cells if you're immunodeficient or immunocompromised so skid hiv if you're taking drugs etc etc unfortunately there's not a lot of drugs that can increase your white blood cell one of the white blood cells that we can increase is neutrophils and we can give something called GMCSF or granulocyte uh, colony stimulating factor. That's just a cytokine that can increase neutrophils. But for the most part, other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult to increase your white blood cell count. So that's leukopenia, that's low white blood cells. You can have increased white blood cells. So increased white blood cells, we call leukocytosis. The most common cause of this is just infection. So in an infection, your body revs up, your immune system makes more white blood cells. The most famous of all is probably EBV or Epstein-Barr virus. This really revs up your white blood cells. It, well, the virus itself infects white blood cells, but it also causes your, causes your spleen and causes your thymus to make more white blood cells, I guess, for it to infect. So Epstein-Barr virus really revs it up and Epstein-Barr virus is like the HPV of the blood. You know, if you recall a reproductive block, HPV causes cancer for everything. EBV is also implicated in a lot of cancers that we're going to talk about in the coming videos. So just keep that locked in the back of your mind. We're going to reference it a lot. Speaking of cancers of the blood, since we're on the topic of increased white blood cells, let's talk about white blood cell cancers. So white blood cell neoplasia, basically a white blood cell that's gone haywire and you're making too much of it. White blood cell neoplasias. These are broken up into leukemias and lymphomas. What's the difference? Well, leukemias are a ton of um, malformed and proliferative white blood cells, mainly in your blood and your bone marrow. So emia, as in blood. Lymphoma is, gets its name because it's found more in your lymph nodes and tissues and organs. That's the OMA part of it. Now there's some overlap, they're not, they're not very segregated. So you're gonna see some leukemias in your lymph nodes, you're gonna see some lymphomas in your blood. So this is a classical definition, but again, there, again, there's some overlap. This video, we're gonna talk about leukemias. Now leukemias can arise spontaneously, but they're also associated with genetic mutations, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But, but again, by definition, leukemias are white blood cell cancers that mainly affect your bone marrow and your blood. So bone marrow, blood. Let's just do a recap. How do we make white blood cells in the first place? We have our hematopoietic stem cell, and that has two different pathways, you recall. We have your common myeloid progenitor, so myeloid, M for myeloid. And then you have one that goes into your lymphoid and progenitor, L for lymphoid. And, that, and these immature progenitor cells, we can sometimes just call blast. Blast, um, the term blast just means immature cell. So we, have your, so we have your myeloblast and your lymphoblast. Your myeloblast will eventually become red blood cells, macrophages, neutrophils, et cetera, et cetera. Your lymphoblast will eventually become your T lymphoblast and your T cells and your B lymphoblast and your B cells. And by taking your T and B cells and by taking things like macrophages, neutrophils, etc., you make your white blood cells. That's just a rundown. In leukemia, something goes wrong. You start to proliferate a ton of these immature blasts. Now these blasts will build up in your bone marrow and if it's very aggressive, you're gonna see signs and symptoms early. We call that acute leukemia. If they're a little less aggressive, then you might see uh, slower signs and more indolent course. We call that chronic leukemia. We'll talk about Q first. Why do you get symptoms when these blasts build up in your bone marrow? Well, these blasts not only destroy your bone marrow, but it also makes it difficult for you to produce regular cells like red blood cells. 
And if you don't have red blood cells, then you have anemia and you have all the signs of anemia. So things like shortness of breath, things like fatigue. You're not gonna have normal white blood cells. So you're gonna have chronic and recurrent infections. You're not gonna be able to make platelets. So you're gonna have bleeding. You just have a ton of these immature blasts that don't really have a function. Yeah, they just build up and they destroy and stop the production of normal cells. So all these go out the window. And so you'll see these signs. And not only that, but your blasts are gonna build up so much that they start to leak out of your bone marrow and into your blood. So you'll actually see blast in the blood. Blast in the blood have a very distinct look. They're basically all nucleus. They're huge cells, very small amount of cytoplasm and a very huge nucleus. As cells grow and mature, they get smaller. Uh, the nucleus condenses, the cytoplasm ratio kind of gets larger, but because these are immature, you go through that process, you just see all nucleus. There's a picture in my notes, you should be able to recognize blast easily. They can show you a picture of blast, not say what they are, and you should be able to recognize them as blast, given the, the context of the question stem. So we see these signs and we see these blasts in the blood. Now here's the thing. How do we know these blasts are myeloblasts? Or how do we know these blasts are lymphoblasts? We need to know this because acute, acute myeloblastic leukemia or AML is way different than acute lymphocytic leukemia or ALL. These two are different, they have different treatments, so we have to make sure we know where the blast is coming from, whether it's a myeloblast or a lymphoblast. Fortunately for us, for a lymphoblast, it has something called terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase or TDT, and, and that is a DNA polymerase found only on lympho Blast, not on mature lymphocytes, not on myeloblast, nothing else, but lymphoblast. Now myeloblast, on the other hand, has an enzyme called myeloperoxidase, or MPO. Myeloperoxidase, well, with a name like myeloperoxidase, it better be specific to myeloblast, and it is. Now it gets a little bit more tricky because we said that lymphoblast can go on to make T lymphoblast and um, T acute lymphoblastic leukemia or T all. Or a lymphoblast can go the B route and make B lymphoblast or B acute lymphocytic leukemia or B all. So B all. And again, these are two very different things. How do you think we're gonna tell them apart? We're gonna look for markers. You got that right. That's what. That's the name of the game for this video. So we're gonna look for markers that are unique to T cells and markers that are unique to B cells. The markers that are unique to T cells, you can already kind of surmise. These are gonna be your CD markers. So your CD2, 3, 4, 8, seen in your T cells, like your helper C cells, your cytoplastic T cells. So CD, I'll just write two to eight. That's the lab finding. Uh, a physical finding of T all you should know is that it presents with a mediastinal mass. That mediastinal mass is basically a thymic tumor. Why do they get a thymic tumor? Do you remember where T cells mature? In your thymus. So I rest my case. So they get a mediastinal mass or a thymic tumor. I'll just write mediastinal, I'm running out of room, mass. From the, all those T cells, essentially. Let's move on to B all. B all these also have CD markers, but they're not gonna be two, four, eight. Instead, they're gonna be things like 10, 19, and 20. Also very important, I'm gonna write up here. We said that some of these cancers arise spontaneously and some are related to genetic mutations. Well, B all is one of them that's related to genetic mutations. You can have a mutation in chromosomes 12 and 21. There's a translocation of 12 and 21. And if you see that, is actually a good prognosis. However, there is another translocation of chromosome 9 and 22, um, better known as Philadelphia chromosome. We'll talk about that in another video, but that is a poor prognosis. 
that's what you need to know about be all. So know what's good prognosis, poor prognosis, and then know the markers, 10, 19, 20. For uh, T-all, know the markers, and also know that it presents as a mediastinal mass. I think that does it for the lymphoid lineage. Let's move on back to the myeloid lineage, your myeloblast. Recall your myeloblast stain for MPO. That MPO can actually aggregate into these crystals called hour rods. So we have our blast here. Again, it's full of nucleus, one giant nucleus and a little bit of cytoplasm. But however, if you see in the cytoplasm, you see these little rods, these sharp little sticks. These are called hour rods. And they are pathognomonic for acute myeloid leukemia or myeloblastic leukemia. It's a dead giveaway, they'll give you a picture. Uh, sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's like a very small rod and you're not really sure what you're looking for. So they give you a picture, always look out for hour rods, okay? It seems, it seems very straightforward, but believe me, I've gotten a lot of these questions wrong. I'm, I, I got a lot of these questions wrong before I got them right, even though the hour rods are right there. So look out for hour rods. You should also be aware that AML has a few subtypes. So all right, subtypes of AML. We can call these AML subtypes M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, etc. One of the main ones is M3, also known as acute pro-myelocytic leukemia. This is the most famous subtype, and it's famous because it's due to a chromosomal abnormality. Translocation of 15 and 17, where it puts a retinoic acid receptor on the chromosome 17. Retinoic acid receptor. Recall, retinoic acid helps differentiate cells, yeah? If you have a bad receptor, like in this case, you can't differentiate those blasts and mature them, and so you get a buildup of these blasts. That's what causes the the, the cancer, essentially. How do we fix this? We give something called all trans retinoic acid. That is essentially a type of vitamin A, and that binds the receptor, binds receptor, activates it, and then you mature the cells. That's all trans retinoic acid. Very important because you can basically cure a cancer with vitamin A. Something else you should be aware of, um, complication of M3 is DIC. Just because the cancer releases substances that can cause you to go into DIC. So just know this kind of random fact, DIC. Another subtype is M5, AKA acute monocytic leukemia. This likes to infiltrate your gums. So you see these um, basically eruptions in your gums. All right, gums. And then lastly, acute mega karyoblastic. And the importance of this one is that it's associated with Down syndrome. Patients with Down syndrome have an increased risk of leukemia because they have chromosomal abnormalities right off the bat. Yeah, and we talked about how some chromosomal abnormalities cause leukemias. Well, look right here. In Chromosome 21 is implicated in B all. So they notice that Down syndrome patients have an increased risk of leukemias. And in particular, when they're under five years old, they get AML, this subtype, acute megakaryoblastic anemia. Once they're over five, they get AOL, kind of like what we just talked about. Now that is your acute leukemias. In the next video, we're going to talk about chronic leukemias. But until then, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.